Um, all right. Well, everyone, thank you so much uh, and for dropping your locations in the chat and giving us something to talk about. I am Mandy Poston. I'll be your host this evening. Um, as I mentioned, I was actually, um, uh, I participated in this last year uh, with my company Availist. It's not my pitch night, so I won't go into too much detail, but we are a food discovery app that helps you find food in your local area and compare across your options. Uh, if you wanna check it out, it's available for download. I had to do the plug. Um, but more importantly, uh, tonight uh, at this Lowenstein Sandler event, we are here um, uh, thanks to Start Out. So Start Out is a US-based nonprofit uh, and it was founded in 2009. And it really focuses on supporting LGBTQ plus entrepreneurs and founders. Um, the mission is to increase the number, diversity, and impact of those entrepreneurs and to amplify their stories and ultimately to drive the economic empowerment of the queer community. Uh, over the past 10 years, we've built a community of over 18,000 members and we support over 300 entrepreneurs every year. Um, and I can say that in a very real way because uh, Startout was one of the first resources I found when I was um, starting my company, looking for people to connect to that I could feel like I could connect to in a very real way. And uh, it's been nothing but wonderful. It's just all roses. Uh, and uh, I, I was lucky enough to be a member of the Growth Lab as well. And um, to participate in events like this and the programming board, and I just can't say enough great things about it. A little technical difficulty, sorry about that. Uh, a little more of the great things, though, I can say about Start Out. So the REACH, it's the world's largest, largest organization supporting LGBTQ plus entrepreneurs. Um, the Growth Lab is the only LGBTQ accelerator the 56 graduated companies have raised over 592 million in funding and created over 3,450 new jobs. Although it looks like that number may be 57 new jobs thanks to Ben's recent hiring spree. Um, there's over 300 mentors and at any given time, uh, over 120 active mentorship pairs. Uh, we have experts in fundraising, marketing, PR, and company growth offering one-on-one -on -one sessions. I've participated in those. They're spectacular. Those, the mentors are real experts in their field. Um, there's countless connections on the, the private online network queue, uh, which I still stumble over saying, and forum. Uh, it's, it's a great place to do warm, cold outreach. If I'm looking to make connections, that's where I head and over 50 community events per year with millions of social media impressions to inspire entrepreneurs from all over the world. Um, so I think you can see from these stats, it's just, it's about networking and community and helping people. Um, and it's a great organization. If you would like to learn more, um, obviously visit the website, join. You can also email for more information uh, to info at startout.org. And now I would like to welcome to the stage, Matthew Hintz, who's representing uh, our sponsor for tonight's events, Lowenstein Sandler. Um, <clears throat> as a partner for their tech group, Matthew focuses his practice on trademark and copyright counseling and other IP. Um, he's an active member of the Bar Association and serves as the vice chair for the Trademark Practice and Policy Committee. Um, and he also leads the LGBTQ plus Alliance. Matthew, thank you so much. I'm glad that everyone is here. Good to see faces in a chat going on. Uh, I feel like you already gave away what I was going to say about myself. Um, so sorry. But, oh, that's right. I think that you were already given that. But as you can tell, I like to talk about trademarks. Uh, I'm a partner here at Lowenstein Sandler. And we are a proud sponsor of Start Out since 2013, so it's been a while. Uh, we represent as a firm clients in virtually every sector of the global economy with an unwavering commitment to client service. Our particular uh, strengths are in the areas of technology, life sciences, financial management, fund industries that fuel economic growth. In particular, uh, for Lowenstein Sandler, we 
I'm in our tech group and particularly our Venture Crush, which is a related set of community enhancing programs that our tech group runs. And in our tech group, again, we focus on startups, funding. We understand the challenge, the value of innovation. And that's why a lot of very iconic companies in the innovation landscape trust us with their legal needs. Um, one thing I'm very proud of at our firm is that our values and commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion are built into the firm, especially with our firm's founder, community leader, and social justice pioneer, Alan Lowenstein. He was renowned for prioritizing and recruiting and welcoming colleagues of all backgrounds and experiences. That continues to be a priority at our firm today. We believe that diversity is both a moral imperative plus a sound business practice as the firm's diversity will make us a stronger, more vibrant law firm and always enhances our ability to deliver the best work product to our clients. And that's the whole spiel, but if you want more, I'm always happy to talk. And I'm muted. No, that was, that was the perfect amount of spiel. Thank you so much, Matthew. <laughs> Um, all right, so moving on. Uh, so just a little heads up on the structure for the evening. Uh, we're going to make it really simple. So each founder is given five minutes to pitch with no Q&A. Um, and Em and I will be keeping uh, an eye on that clock. And then after they're done pitching, you'll see a pop a poll pop up on your screen and we're going to ask you um, each uh, to answer quickly we're going to ask you to answer that poll quickly before we bring on the next founder um, and that'll be a chance for you to um, to engage with them after the fact uh, and yeah with no further ado to start us off please welcome to the stage ben brooks of pilot all right well thank you mandy and um, we need to have whoever sharing the startup size perfect, then I'll be able to share mine. Perfect. All right. Well, I'm Ben Brooks, the founder and CEO of Pilot. I'm here in New York City in my uh, home office and apartment and uh, home and gym and everything else has become. Uh, thanks to Start Out and Lonestein Sandler for hosting this pitch night tonight. We're going to be talking about Pilot's employee development program, which is virtual in nature. We're all about catalyzing employee engagement. So what's the problem that we're solving? Well, for employers, organizations could be for-profit, nonprofit, privately held, et cetera, they're struggling more than ever to retain and engage talent. The hybrid and remote work model, while very popular with employees, including with our company as a remote first company, um, also makes it difficult to develop people and to maintain engagement and connection. You know, a lot of commitments have been made around DEI, especially since the murder of George Floyd, but not a lot of progress has been happening. Employees are frustrated by that. There's sort of a cultural anti-work or anti-ambition um, sentiment that is becoming pervasive, and the great resignation roars on in the face of also an extremely tight labor market. And so this is what our customers are facing. Our solution to this problem is we were trying to fix work by having employees fix it for themselves. We have a comprehensive employee development program that has employees feel powerful at work. We do that by involving managers, executives, and HR along with the employees, which is very rare, to come together. And we have a turnkey program that can be rolled out in just two weeks, which helps HR make a splash and really get in front of people that are feeling frustrated and not heard in their surveys and feedback. And we focus on the 80-20 that we know from our background in HR, coaching, and learning and development of what most employees do to can, can do to squeeze a little bit more satisfaction and success out of the jobs that they already have without requiring the companies or organizations to change. There's so much more that the employee can do for themselves. And of course, we measure everything because we deliver this through technology and virtually so we can provide an order of magnitude more data. Our solution, it's comprehensive in nature. We wrap around the employee. There's a clear role for each stakeholder. We're really focused on behavior change in the real world rather than knowledge absorption. Uh, it's built into the flow of work. So busy people, successful people, people that are in client facing positions and revenue generating can do this. Um, and we reach employees regardless of where they work from home and office or in between. And it generates really high industry leading product usage. You know, we start with employee reflection, getting people to be, have more confidence and self-awareness. We bring managers to talk about, you know, connection and feedback and support with, uh, we have a peer community to bring folks together for 
belonging and inspiration and support, behavior change always works better when people do it together. And of course, we do group coaching and bring humans into the process, not just technology, which challenges employees and helps them synthesize what they're learning and, and uh, be accountable and bring the executives in to share the unwritten rules of work, be vulnerable and expand networks. And of course, for everyone in HR, their pain points, since I'm a former HR person myself, is you got to roll this out quickly, get people to use it and make sure that you can prove that it works. We've been in business now for six years. We're working with a bunch of Fortune 500 and companies, privately held companies, nonprofits. We've won the top HR product of the year. Uh, we work with companies like S&P Global, Nestle, et cetera, and we've become a global provider rolling out across five different continents, supporting employees all over the world and across industries and segments and geographies. These are satisfied multi-year customers we work with. And our customers love that the product works. It's efficient, it's easy, it makes sense but it's also compelling and powerful. Our business model is one that's sustainable. We're not trying to grow into a billion dollar company overnight. We're trying to be an enduring company that makes a lasting impact. You know, the profitability word is sort of new to tech, but we've thought about profitability since day one, because that is the ultimate KPI of a successful business. And we generate a great deal of working capital. Our unit economics and gross margins are fantastic for our category. Our LTV of, you know, key accounts is in the seven figure, plus amount, um, scalable model for staffing and delivery. And, and we have a single product, single instance. So all of our innovation and all of our R&D doesn't get into bespoke or customized engagements. We can always put all of that uh, into a product for all of our customers to enjoy. And we're very capital efficient with a remote first uh, team and a very an innovative technology architecture. We're mission driven. We want to attract people to our mission to work on our team for everyone to feel powerful at work. We'd like to replace performance management with self-management and build an enduring business with leading revenue per employee and a second to none product. The market we're in is massive. We have a clear economic buyer and a $36 billion domestic market. There's a clear budget line. Um, there's a lot of competition. Everyone validates this is an important thing to tackle. And compared to the alternatives in the market, our per employee pricing is typically industry leading on affordability and value. So for those of you listening and you'd like to help us, we love introduce, introductions to HR and industry influencers. Uh, employee referrals is also very helpful. I set a timer for myself. Um, and opportunities to increase our visibility and reach across tech, across LGBTQ and DEI communities, um, and across HR and, and management and leadership communities. I'm Ben Brooks, the founder and CEO of Pilot. I'll put my contact information in the chat. We'd love to connect with you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, and for said a time or two. No, that was great. It's such an important, important challenge to be solving. So the poll is up. Everyone, please take a minute to answer this question before we move on to the next presentation. Um, and I'm not going to, I don't want to spoil any of the pitches, so I'm not going to give too much information, but um, all the companies here tonight um, are doing really, really cool, interesting things. And I'm just excited to, to watch all these pitches. All right, we've got just a, a couple more seconds uh, till that poll goes down. If you want to get those, and the poll is out. All right, with that, I will um, I will hand it over to the very talented Jessica Busser to introduce Wave Therapeutics. Thank you so much. Let me share this screen. So years ago, I was working in a small town emergency department when a disabled vet arrived with the worst infected bed sores I had ever seen. He was septic and almost dead. His doctor had prescribed a $4,000 wheelchair cushion to help treat his wounds, but my patient just couldn't afford it. Each year, 3 million Americans will develop a pressure injury, otherwise known as a bed sore and 60,000 will die as a result. That's 50% more deaths than from car accidents. This problem costs the US economy almost $27 billion annually, most of which comes straight off the bottom line of the nation's healthcare industry. Nursing homes pay an average of $44,000 an incident for treatment costs, and bed sores are the second leading reason facilities get sued for malpractice. This space hasn't seen innovation for decades. 
Current options for care are labor intensive, requiring long hours from family members and overworked nursing staff. Existing devices aren't any better, being made from ineffective pads of foam or gel or lacking even the most basic sensor and processing capabilities. Those few cushions that actually do something don't do nearly enough and are priced so expensively that only the rich can afford them. Insurance currently doesn't pay for prevention of bed sores, only their treatment. It doesn't have to be this way. I'm Jessica Busser, ER nurse and the founder of Wave Therapeutics. We have a vision that no one should have to suffer from these deadly and debilitating injuries. WAVE has developed the first affordable and effective smart cushioning technology to prevent and treat bed sores. Our technology combines two clinically proven therapies, alternating pressure and sequential compression to eliminate pressure points and actively deliver fresh, oxygenated blood to at-risk tissues. We join this with our smart analytics to deliver real-time data and remote patient monitoring. For the smart home environment, we'll sell our connected cushions for wheelchairs, recliners, and conventional beds. For healthcare facilities, we'll use our technology in wheelchair cushions, hospital mattresses, and surgical beds. The U.S. healthcare market for cushioning products is worth over $30 billion, and with our superior technology and significantly better prices, we'll quickly become the standard of care in this important space. After U.S. healthcare, we'll expand into valuable foreign healthcare markets where we've already filed for our IP protections. Talking about IP, I'm excited to share that WAVE was recently awarded our first U.S. patent, and we have numerous additional claims still pending. We will eventually offer additional products for the consumer, automotive, and airline spaces targeted towards office workers, Uber drivers, long-haul truckers, and frequent flyers. We'll begin by entering the market, selling our hardware direct and via distribution, and we'll also earn a valuable monthly reoccurring revenue with our enterprise software offerings. We're raising a $5 million tranche seed round to make all this happen. Our first tranche will fund our pilots and studies. Our second will enable the full launch of our wheelchair cushion. And our third will expand the wheelchair market while allowing us to innovate on the mattress topper products. We're already on our way and have best in class institutional partners teed up for pilots and trials, and we've signed an important contract with the Veterans Health Administration. Our direct to consumer story is just as powerful. In only a few weeks of our test campaign, we collected 1,400 pre sale signups, and our ad conversion rates were four times larger than the industry standards. The numbers show that people are desperate for our life saving technology. We've assembled the people to make this all happen. Our core team includes Fortune 100 tech leaders, healthcare professionals, seasoned device engineers, and serial entrepreneurs. WAVE is on a mission to end preventable bed sores. Join us. Jessica, thank you so much. That was, that was that was amazing. So the poll is popping up now. Please take a minute to answer those questions. Um, you know, Jessica, I, I have had the privilege of watching you pitch before, I think at the Techstars demo day, and I'm just constantly floored by how, uh, how impactful what you're doing is and how little I know about that, that problem and, and how much I learned from the pitch. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, just like a little bit more time on the poll there. Thanks everyone for responding quickly. We appreciate it. And that poll is over. So with that, I will hand the video mic over to Brian Pearson of EDU Rain. Hello. Give me one second here. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Thank you for coming today. My name is Brian Pearson. I founded EDU Ring, and EDU stands for education. I grew up in the foster care system. I went to college and I worked full time just to make ends meet. I worked hard so despite all odds stacked against me, I could graduate with a four year degree. I transferred into SIUE my junior year and I didn't know anything about the apartment search process. I didn't know where to look, I had no roommates and I didn't know a thing about credit. So I went with the easy way out, living on campus. My $1,100 apartment, along with crippling tuition costs, lent me over $60,000 in student debt. And my ex experiences aren't unique. Today, the average student in the US accumulates $30,000 in debt over the four years. Furthermore, there is a housing crisis in the US, a crisis that is exacerbated at the college level. 48% of college students struggle with paying or finding housing because colleges aim to house only about 20% of the total student population every year on campus. When students do look for off-campus housing, they're caught off guard by standard procedures for rental applications like credit scores, renters insurance, and tenant background checks. We've created a student-centered housing platform with tools that empower students financially. Our student-centered platform has a housing search similar to apartments.com. We help match students with our contracted landlords based on their needs. We also offer services curated to help our first-time leases. Our rent reporting program helps them increase their credit scores by up to 40 points. And our partnership with Lemonade gives them access to renter's insurance. We also have a roommate matching feature renters education resources, and a scholarship search tool. We have a $1.6 billion marketplace on the landlord side made up of listing fees and a commission on renters placement. And we have a potential market of $1.3 billion for our student side through leasing services like credit building program, renters insurance, and tenant background checks. We are hiring student ambassadors to, oper to operate as sales agents to target students on social media and to work with university programs on market research projects. Our projected customer acquisition cost for landlords is $11. After testing different business models, we recently deployed our current model. In our first week of deployment, we signed up 15 landlords and 30 students. And this year we completed six sales. ED Rain was built to target students, which we realized by hiring students, by partnering with colleges and creating student-specific features. On the landlord side, again, we create that, that customer success model and the listing model. We charge cust customers commission fee upon leasing being signed, and we also have that listing model as well. Now, other player in this space has a credit building program, a scholarship search, and a housing search in one platform. We have recently raised to have received a $10,000 grant and a $25,000 grant in early June to do a full pilot at Wash University in St. Louis. We've raised $155,000 and been finalists for multiple local and national funding programs, and we look to grow our revenue mostly throughout the school year. EDU Rain is by students for students who struggle slash struggle to pay for school or know someone that did. Two thirds of our teams are software developers and two thirds of our teams have built startups before. Our advisors are experts in higher education, finance, housing, cybersecurity, and entrepreneurship. This platform will empower students to get funding and a place to stay. If we are successful long-term, we will successfully increase the capacity of low-income students to complete the degree, help students build credit and reduce the inequality and hardship among students, which will benefit them a lifetime. EDU Rain is positioned to be the tipping point to helping students succeed in school. With pre-seed funding of $600,000, we'll, we will be able to hire our sales and marketing that will support our technical development and extend our runway for 24 months, which will expand to numerous universities around America. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you, Brian. And under, under the clock limit, for sure. That poll is up. Please, everyone, take a minute to answer those questions. Um, Brian, I, you know, I have to think back to when I was looking for housing when I started college and do nothing and really could have used a service like this. 
Um, yeah, I just want to say one last thing since I am on the time. We also just, um, we just launched a white label service where we build um, the housing site for the colleges. And we have five colleges agreed to see demos for us in the next month after move-in days and students are uh, done. So that means if you're a landlord in our area, you can list on our site and the college's housing site at the same time. Amazing. Uh, that's a great extra fact to get in there under the clock while the poll's still up. All right, but the poll is over. So I'll say thank you so much, Brian. And I will pass the floor over to Michael Tringe from Creator Up. Thanks, Mandy. I'm going to go on to my screen share and go to full screen. Hopefully everyone can see uh, one moment. Let's see why this is coming up here. Is everyone getting my main screen? Okay, thumbs up. All right, we'll do it this way. So nice to see you all. Thanks to Start Out for hosting. It's really exciting to be here. My name is Mike Tringe. I'm the co-founder of Creator Up. And Creator Up is the one-stop shop for companies all over the world to get any type of video made by the next generation of creative professionals. So as we all know, Video production can be difficult. If you were to ask a friend or a colleague whose job is to create content, the question would be, if you asked how much does a video cost or where do you go to find to get a video made? Uh, the answer might be, I don't know both times. And for people who are working at companies and who are responsible for creating those videos, this, cre this creates a challenge. Production companies only do certain types of content Agencies are expensive, and in a post-YouTube era, there needs to be another type of high-quality, high-volume, and fast solution for video content. And that's where our CreatorUp marketplace comes into play. CreatorUp is, is an easy solution for companies to order any type of video from the, the best creative professionals in the world. We've trained and certified over 7,000 creatives to be a part of our global network. And that capability allows for our marketplace to produce video content with speed, scalability, transparent pricing, and in a collaborative platform-centric way. We have uh, a network of over 7,500 creative professionals all over the world who know how to edit, write, produce, direct, and our platform seamlessly matches those project teams to client orders as they come through the platform. There are 50 million creators in the world, and we're training the next generation of creatives around how to work and to, get, to give them job opportunities uh, given their skills and experience. Some of our clients include Google, Coursera, West Coast University, University Special Olympics. Um, we're serving enterprise clients all over the world in their various departments, ranging from learning and development to marketing to virtual reality type uh, content. So Creator Up is on a strong growth trajectory. Um, we've doubled our growth year over year over the last couple of years. Um, we have continued to create more job opportunities for underserved uh, creative professionals who would not have had access to these type of work or to these type of work opportunities in the past. Um, as a gay founder and a filmmaker, I know that there are glass ceilings in the entertainment industry and in the media industry, and I've experienced those myself. And one of the, the visions of Creator Up and the mission of Creator Up is to give those experienced and skilled creative professionals who know how to do the work, the opportunities that they deserve, pay the rate they deserve because of their experience. Uh, we have closed our A round in, in November, backed by an impact ed tech uh, fund called New Market Venture Partners. They're the lead. 
We've had follow-ons from LearnStart, Metavalon, and Achieve Partners, our original seed investors. Uh, Jobs for the Future and Gangels came in for that $5.5 million round. We will be raising a Series B in the future. Uh, please, of course, reach out to me if there is interest in continuing to understand our, our financials and our growth trajectory. I am the co-founder uh, and CEO. My colleague, Hugh Ho, is a, is a thought leader in virtual reality and technology. And, and our chief operating officer, Nick Allman, comes from Kaplan and Disney and has experience in both ed tech and in media. We have a stellar team. We're changing the way that companies get videos made, and we're giving access to opportunities to people who've never had those opportunities before, and we're paying them what they're worth. Thanks very much for your time. It's nice to see everyone here, and I look forward to hearing from you, whether you're interested in video work or in investing in Creator Up in the future. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Um, no surprise, the poll is up, so please please fill out those questions. Uh, you know, Mike, I can say as a business owner who can't even manage to get a reel up on Instagram, I definitely have some questions for you. <laughs> I can definitely use some help. So thank you for that. Just give a few more seconds before we close out the poll. Thank you everyone for taking the time to fill out those questions. It really does help us. And with that ending, I will pass the mic over to Hydrus AI and George Lee. Thank, thank you. Um, let me share my screen real quick. Um, can you see my screen or just like a part of it? Just a part of it. And I'm guessing the people are on the side there. We can see it now. I want to make sure one second. Okay. Um, all right. And so you can see my screen now. Yes. yes. Okay. So hi everyone. My name is George Lee and I'm the founder and CEO of Hydrus. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about ESG, something called environmental, social, and governance. And so within the topic of sustainability, these are three categories that often affect companies. And so this ranges from things like energy usage, greenhouse gas emissions, all the way to diversity and inclusion. So within the uh, human impacts that we probably have all experienced at some point in life, uh, we know that uh, the impacts to our environment are very much real. So it doesn't really matter where you lean politically, ideologically, uh, we know what's going on and uh, we have to do something about it. Most of the impacts are driven by companies, so not as much by the average individual uh, in the world. Yes, she is entering the mainstream. So most recently, uh, earlier this year, the SEC floated a mandatory disclosure for climate change risks and emissions. So over time, every single organization is going to have to report their carbon footprint and other data related to their environmental uh, footprint. And really what this has resulted in is a mess. Um, top right-hand corner, I used to do this work as a sustainability manager uh, for a very large uh, publicly traded company. Basically, a lot of the work is manual. You're spending half the year gathering information from all of the facilities in the organization. And then you're spending the second half of the year responding to a lot of these different ratings agencies and organizations, uh, you know, things like uh, MSCI, S&P, uh, CDP. And uh, the whole process is just very cumbersome. It's also very costly. So over time, you're spending um, virtually um, just a lot of uh, money uh, doing a lot of manual work. And so our software platform solves for that problem. We centralize all of the data into one single system. So you can look at um, your sustainability data all in one place. And we also apply machine learning to the data so you can project 
where certain metrics are going into the future. Our approach is really an accurate, auditable, and a streamlined data-driven approach. So you can make decisions on real data and we focus on simplicity. So if you can use an iPhone, you can use our software platform. I've used a lot of software tools that are very bad in this space. And over the last few years, what I learned was having something that everyone can use is very important. This is just a snapshot of what it looks like, but I can give you a very quick demo as well. You can uh, store all of your energy data all on one platform. Uh, you can audit this information. View all the uh, information in charts that you might want to uh, create or build so that you can create reports on. And then finally, you can also do a full greenhouse gas emissions calculation, scope one, two, and three. And so this really helps uh, organizations support uh, all of the compliance related initiatives that they will have to partake in over the next few years. And this is a global ph phenomenon. In terms of go to market, we sell to publicly traded companies and private companies. There's been a lot of spillover into the private uh, space. And then we really target the chief sustainability officer, uh, the director of investor relations or CFOs uh, in companies. In terms of revenue per customer, uh, what we're looking at is 80 to 150 for enterprise and then uh, SMB between 20 and 50K. Here's our current traction. So we started the year at about $15,000 of revenue. We've grown 10X in the last six to seven months, and we have a very large weighted pipeline and we expect to close a lot of new deals. Um, this is a client case study. So we serve a Fortune 200 provider of uh, transportation third-party logistics. And then um, what we've been really able to do is transformational for them. It's reducing a lot of the time that they have to spend doing manual data entry. We've improved their net zero greenhouse gas modeling, and we're now looking at uh, modeling for energy reduction across the entire enterprise. Here's some of our customers and our uh, pipeline. So we're looking to, to grow very rapidly over the next uh, six to 12 months. And we're working to raise between one and a half and two million uh, for our seed investment. And um, again, this is how we think about getting to a million in revenue. It's really going to be uh, uh, corporates and partnerships with consulting and legal firms. And finally, uh, this is our team and why we, we will win. Uh, our belief is that sustainability is here to stay and it's going to only become more and more, and more important over time. Um, and with you. that, thank you so much. Thank you, George. That was great. That system really did look like it, you could make something as complicated as what you're doing easy to use, which is very impressive. Even looked like I might be able to manage it. Um, so the poll is up. Everyone, please take a minute to answer those questions again. Thank you so much. And while you're closing that out, we are going to go ahead and hand over to Michael Diego of Whitway. All right. Thank you. Let me pull up my screen. All right. Can everybody see that? Is that yes. a yes? Perfect. All right. So my name is Michael Diego, and I'm building Wise Assistant, where we're monetizing the creator economy. So I've been a creator my entire life, whether it was painting in high school or videography in college, I've always wanted to create. Now, after college, I learned just how hard it was to monetize my business and be an independent creator. So after building software solutions for some of the biggest tech companies in the world, I built Wise Assistant. And now I want to tell you a story about one of the creators I've been working with through Wise Assistant over the last couple of years, and her name is Sydney Rose. She's one of 200 million creators that jumped into the creator economy when COVID-19 forced her to stay at home. 
And now Sydney wants to pursue her passion to be a full-time creator and leave her day job working nine to five. But Sydney struggles to monetize in-person events and experiences. You see, Sydney is a food and travel creator, and she has to navigate a web of different complicated marketing tools that help her to start her business. Now, the subscriptions and time she spends learning these applications quickly cuts into her bottom line and making her profitability the biggest problem. Now, of the 500 million passionate economy users and over 200 million uh, creator creators, there are over 20 million experienced creators. Now, Sydney focuses on producing content and sharing videos around food and travel. She's like other travel and food bloggers that want to start a leisure business monetizing content around food and experiences. And they have it the worst. There's no cut and dry way for her to take all the amazing photography and content she produces to start her business. And that's where Wise Assistant comes in. We're providing experienced creators a one-stop shop to monetize events and in-person experiences. We give them a powerful creator store, replacing incumbents like WordPress and, SquarePay and Squarespace, and then allowing her to market her products and services at scale. We help her sell ticketed events and monetize content around food and in-person experiences, replacing platforms like MailChimp and Shopify. And creators love what we're building. Today, we have over 573 creators and we've grown eight times this year alone. Now, those creators have brought over 6,600 of their subscribers into our ecosystem. And we have 100 ambassadors that are advocating for our platform in six cities across the US. Here they are selling out local events where they're networking and learning how they can turn their passion for creating content around food and experiences into a profitable business. Now, we're, our mission is to empower experienced creators to make a living working for themselves and giving them financial freedom. Today, we're focusing on events with local restaurant affiliates, but tomorrow we're gonna enter the global tra travel industry. And then in 2030 and beyond, we're gonna be the future of work for creators. Now, today we're monetizing through premium subscriptions through our most leveraged creators. So we launched Pro in July and in August, we're launching our premium plan. Now our creators sell digital products, memberships and services, and we take a service fee depending on the subscription that they have. But in the future, we're gonna deploy these creators at scale for business and br brand influencer marketing campaigns, working with some of the biggest food, travel and leisure businesses in the world. Our goal is to get to 40,000 monthly revenue in just eight months. Now, we operate at the intersection of the monetization economy and the creator economy, where we have platforms like Linktree and Shopify, and then moving into the creator management space, like platforms like Grin and Aspire. Now, we have an underrepresented team with skill sets from across the board. I myself come, come from a background building cloud computing solutions for companies like Hewlett Packard and MasterCard, but we have uh, engineers and product leaders with a decade of experience building consumer products. Our advisors have exited billion dollar companies and have experience selling companies to, to recognize names like Accenture, Yahoo, and SoftBank. So we're raising a $250,000 pre-seed round to fund our operations through July of 2023. As of today, we already have $100,000 committed, and we're going to leverage those resources to get to $30,000 in monthly recurring revenue before December of 2022. We're going to expand our footprints in the six cities across the U.S., building our vibrant local creator communities, and we're going to bring on over 10,000 local creative solopreneurs. So thank you so much for allowing me to talk to you today about Wise Assistant, and I'm excited to talk more about having you join the Wise Assistant family, along with great names like Startout, where we're a part of the Growth Lab, as well as J.P. Morgan Chase. So thanks again for letting me talk about Wise Assistant, where we're helping experienced creators make a living working for themselves. Thank you, Michael. Um, it's a really cool platform, and it seems like everyone is a creator today, so definitely a big market. Um, everyone I know anyway. All right, the poll is up. Everyone, please take a minute to answer those questions. And we are going to go ahead 
and keep things moving and pass, pass it over to Scott with See the Queens. Okay, can you all see the screen? Awesome. Yes. So thank you very much, Mandy. And now who is ready to talk about drag queens? So hello, everyone. My name is Scott Adam, and I'm one of the founders of SeeTheQueens.com, your guide to local drag shows and drag entertainment. Now, in 2009, RuPaul's Drag Race premiered, and in the 13 years since, the Emmy-winning franchise and its dizzying number of spinoffs have exploded into a profitable worldwide phenomenon, thus creating a viable new entertainment sector, drag professionals. And as the drag market continues to expand at a rapid pace, so does the opportunity to meet its growing needs and those of its fans. Now, when the world started to reopen after a very isolating pandemic, uh, one of the first forms of entertainment available was to go to the neighborhood bar and watch a local drag show. As I started to go more and more to these events, I figured there has to be some website or app that I was just not cool enough to know about, <laughs> which could tell me which shows were playing, where and when. But there wasn't. It was 2021, and yet there was no centralized platform to hear about upcoming drag shows in New York City. We have more drag performances happening every night than there are even Broadway shows. Between weekly drag shows, special events, and popular weekend drag brunches, there are over 180 opportunities to catch a drag performance in New York each week. In doing our research, we also realized that there was no real online aggregator for the drag space like in every other major industry. Now, before getting involved in this drag project, I was in residential real estate sales at Compass, um, and I had a front row seat to watching online aggregators like StreetEasy and Zillow come to market prominence. Aggregators were able to play a vital role in building a centralized and powerful audience, as well as creating profitable business-to-business -business opportunities. Now, you might be asking yourself, is there really a market in drag? Um, and what about outside of New York City? And the short answer is a resounding yes. In fact, there's a lot more money in drag than one might expect, said Brandon Voss. Uh, Brandon is the owner of Voss Events, the company that now runs multiple worldwide tours featuring celebrity drag race stars. Uh, these tours grew from 22 cities across the US and Europe in 2017 to 85 cities in 2019, including more arenas than ever before. 2022 will be the next full year of reporting for the live events industry. But in 2019, the tours sold more than 130,000 tickets with prices ranging from $50 to more than $170, and we are on track to break that record this year. DragCon, an annual event held in New York and Los Angeles, attracted a combined total of over 100,000 fans whose total spend on just merchandise alone was over $8.2 million. That event has been so successful that London has now been added to January 2023. And what's important to recognize is that drag is no longer considered just an LGBT community event anymore, but rather it has started to go mainstream with the majority of DragCon attendees actually being straight millennial females. This website will have many functions. Uh, it will allow fans to find the best local drag shows and performances. It will allow them to track their favorite artists, get personalized event recommendations, buy tickets and merch, and book artists directly. It will allow artists and venues to promote their upcoming shows and events, engage with brand partners, sell tickets and merch, secure corporate and private bookings, and transact with business-to-business -business providers and opportunities. Some of our primary revenue streams in our first two versions are advertising models, both affiliate and partnerships, as well as curated uh, drag experiences, bar crawls, VIP nights, bachelorette experiences, and membership packages. Version three and on will have a lot of business to business enterprise with corporate bookings, a marketplace for drag related goods and services, expanded partnerships. There'll be an internal merch store and we will get involved in live event production, artist management and data sales, um, building all of this for easy scalability to all other national and international cities. Um, something that's also really important to us are our ESG and anti-racist initiatives. We'll be guaranteeing homepage placement for BIPOC events and performers. We'll be uh, controlling the algorithm to promote equity and minimize racist bias. We have a one uh, buy one, give one ticket program. And what's most important to me is number four, helping to build community wealth by offering stock ownership in see the queens to local drag artists. Now that this is only a five minute pitch, I don't have time to touch on everything like what makes See the Queens uniquely positioned to succeed and what our rollout roadmap looks like. So we're hoping you will sit down with us soon so that we may take some more time and talk to you a little bit more. Um, and then everyone, please join us for our launch this fall. And just please remember there is never a wrong time to tip a drag queen. Thank you very much. 
That's amazing. Thank you, Scott. Um, also, you were probably focused on your pitch, so you didn't see the chat lighting up. But uh, yep. Ben dropped Ben dropped the term "draggregator," which is pretty uh, something you should you should <laughs> as a descriptor. Um, all right, uh, the poll is up. Please, everyone, take a minute to answer those questions. Scott, thank you so much. Um, much more fun than cow tipping. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pass things over to Katie Rayburn with BioMilk Skin Skincare. Katie, you are muted. Sorry, I was just saying that a drag act is a very tough act to follow, but I'm gonna do my best. So everyone, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time and for having us. Thanks for our sponsors. Uh, my name is Katie Rayburn. I am the co-founder at Biomilk Skin Care. We are a skin microbiome care company. Uh, essentially, the reason that we exist uh, is the skin microbiome. Most people are familiar with the microbiome in the context of digestive health or immune health. Um, we also have a unique bacterial uh, balance on the surface of our skin, and when we get unbalanced uh, is when we experience a lot of everyday skin issues. So everything from dullness, dryness, sensitivity, um, more consumers than ever are experiencing uh, sensitive skin. Uh, and the reason for that um, is this uh, microbalance in, uh, microbiome imbalance. Uh, it's the pro products that folks are using. It's stress, it's UV, blue light, pollution, and so forth, uh, internal and external factors. So Biomilk uh, is all about bringing you a healthy and balanced microbiome for your healthiest skin every day. Uh, we leverage probiotic, prebiotic, and skin superfood ingredients. Uh, again, most people are familiar with probiotics in the context of uh, nutrition. Uh, this is also nutrition, but it's nutrition for your skin. Prebiotics are the nutrients that probiotics need to, which are good bacteria, need to be healthy. And skin superfoods, of course, bring a well-rounded skin nutrition approach for total uh, health uh, of the skin. Uh, why are we unique? Uh, it is an incredibly crowded space. Uh, we've done a, uh, our, our darndest to be really, really differentiated in the fact that we are truly 100% clean and efficacious. Uh, this isn't clean, this is truly clean with scrubbed ingredients lists that are accepted by whole, retailers like Whole Foods, Credo and Detox Market in terms of being clean and safe ingredients, non-toxic. We, opt, we optimize our formulas for skin biome nutrition, uh, and we are uh, sold at an accessible mastige price point. So we're sort of every, anywhere between $5 for our entry level, like a lip balm, a sheet mask, to $30 for our most concentrated uh, probiotic formula, which is in our serum. Uh, the team is very lean, as myself uh, and, and my co-founder, Valerie. We launched several years ago. Uh, we both have CPG industry experience. Uh, Val was at, uh, who's in the room, by the way, hi Val, uh, was at Johnson & Johnson uh, in skincare, personal care, and, and others for many years, as well as at Church & Dwight, where we met, which is the Arm & Hammer baking soda company, uh, where we both worked on numerous brands, Val in particular on beauty, and I myself moved on to startups. This is my second startup uh, role, my first time as a founder. Uh, in terms of traction, we have definitely established a lot of really critical milestones. Uh, our total sales over the last few years is about $200,000. Our monthly recurring revenue, uh, we're around $12,000 with an all-time high of 30 uh, earlier this year, thanks to our amazing new sales partnership with Whole Foods Market in the Florida region. Uh, we're working with numerous other independents uh, as well as launched, we just launched on Amazon uh, earlier this year. Uh, we just completed the Start Out Growth Lab Accelerator, and we've worked on some others, and that's been a really fantastic learning and networking experience. Uh, and our website has a really positive uh, repeat rate, a very low return rate, uh, and I'm actually relaunching it uh, next quarter to have an even better e-commerce experience. Uh, in terms of our Whole Foods launch, we've made a lot of traction uh, once we were in the market and, and got up to date in all the stores in Florida. Uh, we have been growing week over week really strongly with the addition of a new team member uh, in the Florida market, which is super, super exciting. And I am actually relocating to Florida in part to help support our launch, work on activations in stores, uh, as well as local gyms and numerous other wellness locations. Uh, our Amazon launch similarly is going really well. We have some fantastic uh, growth in terms of the number of reviews that we've been able to generate, which is really important in terms of getting um, plenty of uh, new, new, new sales. Um, 
<clears throat> I will share. I just got my control stuck. Uh, we'll, as I said, be working on in-store in demos, working out uh, Florida and the Whole Foods experience, uh, prospecting additional accounts, uh, working on brand partnerships, building our email list for free. Uh, that's a big initiative that I've been working on this year that's been working out really well for us for acquisition, just for the cost of uh, product for one, one person. As I mentioned, we're launching a new D2C site and uh, next year, Q1, so starting in January, we will be fundraising. This is actually a pre-seed uh, round for us. We are self-funded to date, uh, and we'll be looking to raise about a half a million dollars to go towards a massive marketing scale-up, uh, trade spend, which is in-store retail spend. Uh, finally, hiring some part and full-time uh, folks to help us and continuing to roll out new customer uh, innovations, new product innovations. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Perfect timing. Thank you, Katie. Uh, love this idea. It makes perfect sense. Taking the science we put inside. Thank you. Applying it to the outside. The skin is an organ. Oh, and I, I neglected to mention, sorry to interrupt you, Mandy, but I have a, a demo in the way of Ben Brooks's beautiful <laughs> face. Uh, he's a, one of our favorite customers. And if everyone can take a look at Ben, just be in just awe. Soak it in. Thank you, okay. Ben. We'll, we'll run over model. time for this. It's it's for everyone's benefit. All right. Thank you so much. Poll is up. Please please answer those questions, and we will move on to the last, but certainly not least, pitch of the evening. It is Wavy R. Joe Wilbert. Hi, everyone. Let's see. Can you see my screen there? Yes. Okay. Great. Hi, everyone. I'm Joe. I'm the co-founder of WayVR. And WayVR is a touchless way to control devices using natural human behavior, like hand gestures and speech recognition. In fact, I'm actually using WayVR right now to give this presentation. So if you can see me, I can scooch back and I can launch into full screen mode with a simple gesture like that. And then I can use a swipe to carry on. So what's the problem we're addressing? Current input devices, the mouse, touchpads, keyboards, hinder and hurt people. They limit people's speed of productivity to how fast they can scoot around a mouse or type on a keyboard. Moreover, they actually harm people's health. People are hunched over a mouse and keyboard for 40 plus hours a week. And as a result, they get poor posture, repetitive stress injury, even problems with obesity and tension. And I know from experience, I was a lawyer for over seven years, working a ton of time over a mouse and keyboard, and I experienced many of these same symptoms and realized there had to be a better way. Additionally, there's um, a problem with obsolescence. The mouse and keyboard really can not accommodate the three-dimensional spatial and dynamic content that is becoming more and more regularly presented with the metaverse, mixed reality, and Web3. And that's where WaveYard comes in. WaveYard provides hand tracking and speech recognition to provide a faster and healthier and much more efficient and natural way of computing. Moreover, WaveYard is multi-platform and works across computers, phones, websites, and the internet of things. And it's software only. There's no headset, or no new hard and no new hardware required. Indeed, this is a placeholder slide, but that's okay. Since I'm running WaveVR, I can actually edit it on the fly using hand gestures by going into a create slides mode. So I'll use hand gestures and dictation to talk about our progress. So my co-founder and I met um, less than a year ago and started working on WaveVR in January of this year, we've been building heads down and I'm happy to report that MVP app is launching in two weeks. That gesture there stops dictation, but I can pick it back up again after I'm speaking with things that I don't want transcribed. Platform for businesses to integrate controls into their own websites. We're building a platform for everyone to interact in a natural, healthier, and more efficient way. 
And our ultimate vision is to bring ubiquitous computing using natural behaviors. And so now that I've typed that slide out, I'll go back into presentation mode. Lost the slideshow up again. And we can carry on. We're addressing a truly massive market. There's facts in the slide, but the core takeaway is this. There are billions of people that take for granted that they need to be hunched over a mouse and keyboard in order to interact with computers. And with WayVR, that won't be true anymore. So how will we get to market? First, we'll have a free tier, which will be a mobile app that lets you control your computer through your phone. And that will let you control presentations, document creation, dictation, and browsing the web with basic speech and gesture controls. We'll also have a premium tier with expanded voice control, integrations with specific applications, and customization options. And we're building a platform. This is a subscription service where uh, other businesses and developers can build WayVR controls into their own sites and applications, and we'll probably have a free tier for open source and individual products. And all along the way, there will be network effects accumulating. One, through the visual nature of WayVR, people can see WayVR users acting with touchless controls. And also, we're building collaborative functionality where multiple users can interact in 3D digital space if they have WayVR. And finally, there's also a cumulative effect with the WayVR platform, where if uh, you're a subscriber to WayVR, your own users accessing your website will be able to seamlessly navigate from your site to the sites of other WayVR users, other WayVR subscribers, uh, through touchless gestures and speech. And with each additional subscriber, it will create a bigger, more powerful, touchless web using WayVR controls. My co-founder and I are a passionate team that are, we're driven to solve this problem and we have the experience to do it. Like I said, I was a former lawyer. I was fortunate to be able to retire from the practice of law at 32 in order to build AI applications and single-handedly built a prior application that was a speech and gesture control app for desktop. And it was good. It wasn't as great as I needed it to be. And I met Eugene, who is an engineering wizard. He has a master's uh, in Joe, engineering. Joe, we're going to have to call time on you. I don't know what oh. hand gesture it is, but um, thank you so much. That was an amazing, uh, amazing demo, really cool technology, and possibly a solution to my mouse, which I think is haunted <laughs> whenever I'm trying to give a presentation. So I'm, I'm excited to try it out. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, the last poll of the evening is up. Everyone, please take a minute to answer those questions. Thanks. Um, thanks so much for coming tonight. The pitches, thanks to all the founders. The pitches were fabulous. So many cool companies being built. It's really inspiring. Um, and thanks to uh, everyone for engaging in the chat and dropping in puns. That's what I always love to see most. Uh, I hope everyone has a great evening. We appreciate you. Appreciate you coming out. And definitely follow up with these founders. I will. We don't have any outro music either. We'll work on that for next time. <laughs>